All right, comedy aside, I am excited to be getting into year 2022 and we don't Ooh. receive that that meme that's been going across all of our computers that say it's 2022 that is the second time of 2020 we don't receive that and um so you know usually in the beginning of the year what we do is we bring forth a vision and the word that god has for uh this coming uh year for us uh when I was conferring with uh, some of our prophetic voices and, and, and just talking to God a lot myself, we really came to the conclusion that before we can really release uh, what the forward motion is, there's a couple of just, no, I got it. There's a couple of just preparation steps um, that we need to do that, that we can work through. And God was teaching me a lesson through even a circumstance with a friend um, that I just wanted to share with you today. So I just want to let you know, I'm going to be um, speaking with you the next couple of weeks after that. So we've got one step, two step, and then I'm going to be talking about the vision and the future, uh, hopefully by then. <laughs> but we, we have some steps coming forward. A lot of us are sitting here saying, and, and Tim was even saying it to me last night, is like, I feel something on the horizon, but it's very unclear. And I think it, I think part of that is that we are here to take um, kind of some preparation, preparatory steps first. Um, one thing that, the, that God has re really revealed to me over the last few weeks is that, you know, the church as a whole is really crying out, like, just like John the Baptist was. Here, let me enter that. Um, John the Baptist is saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. I think we can all tangibly feel, taste, smell, and every kind of our senses are keen to this. But before, first, we have to repent. And if you look at these verses, it says, you know, he's saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven at hand. And, in G and um, Jesus says the exact same thing. From that time on, Jesus began to proclaim his message with these words, keep turning away from your sins and come back to God before heaven's, for heaven's kingdom realm is now accessible. Now let's think about that. Let's take the caveat off. We are not sinners. We are, do not identify as sinners. We've been washed clean. We have been completely renewed. We wear, we wear Christ's righteousness over us, but we do make mistakes and we do do things the wrong way. Um, that isn't the kingdom way sometimes. And so what repentance looks like is wildly misunderstood um that we think that it ha is this deep sorrow and this uh, self-hatred and identifying as something that we are not um but really we come in humility and humility is actually being in agreement with what god says we are which is not thinking too highly of ourselves and not thinking too lowly of ourselves either uh so it is that to take some time to reflect uh, and to look back and see where we need to repent and what repentance really looks like in this case. And what I want to talk about today is to reflect and look back and see where maybe we were believing a lie or where maybe we we're just out of alignment with kingdom beliefs and kingdom, the kingdom message, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so it's where, where have we kind of missed the mark? Where have we not not come into agreement with proper alignment with a kingdom but truth be told this is what i discovered through a conversation with a friend recently most of us actually have no idea how to repent most of us have no idea what the work of repentance actually looks like yes repentance is work it's not this like thing where we we go oh i'm so sorry i'm such a worthless worm and then we go about doing our lives the way we have always done them Think about this. A lot of times we go, oh, I totally jacked this up. I was so wrong. And then you find yourself a month later, two weeks later, three months later, doing the exact same thing in the exact same cycle. And it's, it's kind of like Moses walking around the mountain. He could have walked the journey to the promised land in like 40 days. Instead, he took 40 years. And it's because we have to be able to shift and know how to repent. Well, here's the, here's the real big checkpoint repentance is not just in the mind okay 
Repentance does not occur only in the mind. Our acknowledgement of making a mistake occurs in the mind, but repentance is actually done in the heart. Now I'm going to pull up another verse for you. Sorry about that. Maybe I should have let you have this. I thought I had it all together. Like I was so smart that I could do this all myself. All right. Find James for me. <laughs> this is what happens when Andrew's not at church because he's snow blowing is like, I'm like, where was that? Oh, it's up. All right. Okay. So let's think about this. Repentance is done in the heart. And I like the verse, James 2.26. Now it's about faith. James 2.26 is really about faith. But I propose we could take that concept and we can apply it over here to repentance. James 2.26 says, for as, as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Here's the thing. You can, you can speak out repentance all you want. You can say you're sorry. You can say, oh, I changed my mind and, and, and be done with that. But without working it out in your life, it has no power. So what I'm really saying here is that when we learn there is a lie we're believing, we have to repent, which means change our mind into the right thinking and then let our actions show the truth. You poor guy. Now you're, oh, I know why I cut it. I'm so sorry. So I wanted to walk you guys through a little bit of a process of what it actually takes to truly walk through in the work of repentance. Sometimes it, sometimes it really is simply like we do in some inner healing work is to say, hey, I don't agree with that lie I'm believing anymore. And I allow that to just walk away from me and I choose to embrace the truth. But when we've actually made a mistake that affects other people, and I do mean mistake, most of us sitting here today, we're never being like, I think I'm going to intentionally walk outside of kingdom principles. I don't see any of us that are actually doing that. But the fact is, sometimes we just miss it. So that repentance takes a little more work. So just a couple of steps for you is number one. I always start with this warning. When you're going into the work of repentance, do not allow shame to have to allow the voice of the enemy to produce shame in your life in other words we don't do shame here this family does not do shame and i have found that through mass amounts of experience when somebody gets into shame they typically are they typically make their mess bigger a lot lot bigger and offend their own heart and offend other people's hearts is not worth it. We don't do shame. We do genuine, authentic changing of our minds, changing of our actions. The two, so number one, we recognize we're not going to allow ourselves to get into shame. Number two, we're going to recognize the mistake. These two things are with humility, which means thinking of myself accurately and trusting God fully. So we're not going to get into shame and we're going to recognize our mistake, which produces this humility in our lives then we go on to empathy empathy i believe is pretty wildly misunderstood as well empathy is where i can sit and think about how how this may have affected another so say i hurt my mom for some reason and i say that because she can't take it personally anymore um if i hurt my mom for some reason my job as an empathetic person is to look at how she must feel about my actions, how she must have felt in the hurt that was done and the, the spill that was made, the mess that was created in her heart as a result of my actions. I, I talk about it a lot like an octopus. It's like, okay, I believed a lie. I wasn't in alignment with kingdom values. And now how, how does that spread out from here? How does that affect others from here? And the way to that is to actually sit there and think about how others must be feeling, to step into their shoes for just a moment and to allow yourself to feel what they're feeling and experience what they're experiencing. 
again, without getting into shame. Then we get to talk to God. See, now this is work, right? But then we get to talk to God, a loving father, one who accepts you no matter what is going on, one who never shames you, one who never walks away from you, one who never betrays you, and to talk to him honestly and find the deepest why. Why did I do that thing? Why did I say that thing? Why did I believe this lie that the enemy was telling me? This will bring about healing. So we adhere to the warning that we don't get into shame. We recognize our mistake. Um, that brings us into humility. Then we go into empathy and find the deepest why to find the root of exactly why I am choosing to misalign myself with a kingdom belief or believe a lie that the enemy is, is, is bringing me. And that brings about healing. The next step is to go clean up our mess and take responsibility in any way you can. Sometimes with some people and some mistakes, this takes a period of time that we get to, you know, maybe we, we broke somebody's trust. Maybe, maybe we um, did something that was such an infraction that we just have to train and, and relearn and redevelop trust with that person. The next thing is, is to actually be grateful. Be grateful that this thing happened and figure out what lessons we can learn. You know, I think about, man, making some mistakes, <laughs> making some mistakes and going, wow, but I am much wiser now. I have learned so much from these things. I have gained, you know, sometimes the deepest relationships can be formed through the fire of conflict. It really can. And it's when we're willing to go deep enough into relationship to have that conversation, to have that, that humility, to have that healing come through. And that brings about honor. So we bring about humility, we bring about healing, and we bring about honor. So here's the thing, it's time to put the old behind us and repent from the mindsets that belong in the past. You know, I'm, I am absolutely thinking about what God has been bringing us through. Uh, Lonnie posted this post and it was really incredible um, the, how crazy true it was for a lot of us. I'm going to bring it up real quick because it just had such a powerful phrase. 2019 broke me. <laughs> I remember that. 2019 was hard for the majority of us, really hard. It was darn right traumatic for me. 22 changed me. That's true. We formed an online church service. We changed the way we do church. We got to gain some amazing members of our family that couldn't otherwise join us. 2021 opened my eyes. And this is what I'm referring to. 2021, it was a winter season. I really feel like, like, you know, I think of Oakdale. I walk through Oakdale to Forest Preserve, right? And during the winter time, all the leaves fall off the trees and you can see everything that's underneath. You can see everything that normally is not exposed. Yeah, see if I can get to that in a few minutes. Um, I can see everything that's on the ground floor I can, of the forest. I can see the water that I normally couldn't see because it was so covered by foliage. And so the winter season happened. And honestly, guys, the world did not get darker. The world did not get darker. God exposed the darkness that was already there. So we get the opportunity to now deal with that thing. So 2021, it opened our eyes to see what was really there, the root things that were lying underneath. And now the, the hope and the blessing is 2022, we're coming back, right? And so I want to read a little thing that, um, that, well, there's a couple of things I wanted to read real quick. And then I want to lead us through a reflective time um, that's so incredibly powerful. Where is that? I took too many pictures of my daughter in her new toy. Anyways, do you know what I'm talking about, Dan? Maybe you can grab it. Came from Denise. I apologize, I was having too many different things. 
I'm attached to here. There. I really thought that this, this, there's this thing that was just so powerfully written. I just want to share it with you. Um, I found it. Thank you. It's just a story that really talks about repentance and our motivations behind repentance real quick. So this starts out with, and this wasn't Denise writing this one. This was just something she shared with me. It says hashtag transparent moment. About five years ago, I broke fellowship with somebody I'd considered a close friend. I found out that they had been using me and the pain of the revelations crushed me deeply. Sounds like 2019. It took years and years of prayer and forgiveness and self-work to heal. I had cut off all contact with them as part of the healing process, but they resurfaced last month and asked to meet and apologize for what happened. 80% of me said no, but I listened to the 20% that said yes, because I was genuinely curious about what they had to say. Within five minutes of talking, they begged for my forgiveness and explained how they never meant to hurt me. They explained how they had been dealing with traumatic events on their end, and because of it, they didn't value our friendship the way they should have. I explained that, that I had forgiven them years ago in order to heal without being bitter, but they insisted on having me tell them, I forgive you. So I did. <sighs> They let out a sigh of relief and changed the subject to more mundane things like family and careers. As the weeks passed, I never heard from them again and God gave me a revelation. Sometimes we apologize to relieve guilt, not to restore relationship. An apology is only as sincere as the actions taken after is accepted. And to date, no effort has been made to rec rectify the damage that was done. My ex-friend was satisfied with simply knowing they were forgiven. And this is where Holy Spirit started teaching me. How many of us transgress against God then seek his forgiveness, but not his fellowship? How many of us repent to relieve guilt, but not to restore relationship with God? My ex-friend simply embodies the, the way many of us treat God. We want access, but not accountability. God's been talking to me specifically about that word accountability. As soon as we feel forgiveness wash over us, we hop off our knees, splash some water across our face and skip away like all is well, but all is not well. God help me to see how I look to him when I want to be forgiven, but not surrendered. Sometimes the pain we feel is simply an echo of the pain we've caused. Maybe we never, we never be satisfied with shallow. May we never be satisfied with shallow forgiveness without the deep work of repentance. That really hit me is like, okay, so again, repentance is not coming into self-hate, self-worth issues to know that God values us completely and truly and he accepts us completely. But what is the motivation for our repentance? Is it removal of guilt or restoration of relationship? We should always be about relationship. Like I say, relationship is everything, whether with God or with others, relationship is everything. And so the goal should always be connection, always connection. So it's, it's like my key verse for the last three years, spend, let love and kindness be the motivation in all you do. So I want to read a word that Denise wrote. It, it really resonated with what God was showing me is, hey, a preparation step is to take a reflective look at these last, this last bit of time, especially this last year, and then to be able to leave behind what needs to be left behind and bring forward what needs to be brought forward. And so I just want to read to you what she writes here. It's also in a blog post. So don't forget about um, Find Your Oxygen group. Uh, we, we have amazing ministers that spend good time to really work to provide you with amazing content. And I say amazing content because I'm not writing it. They're doing amazing, amazing stuff there. You do not want to miss out. But I also, this is coming up in a post, uh, I think on Wednesday. Um, so make sure you, you catch this. But just come with me and just center yourselves and allow God to show you a vision. I want you to visualize this with me. It's the creative part of your mind. It's where innovation comes from. 
Let's just meet with Jesus just a second, shall we? So I want you to envision 2021 as a worn and tattered, dirty robe. Father God is holding out a fresh, whole, brilliant robe for each of us to wear in 2022. God is saying it is time to step out of the old and put on the new. It is a personal decision for each of us to make. Do we want to carry the burdens of 2021 with us into the future? Or do we want to step into a fresh perspective with a heart full of hope and faith? For those of us who are willing, we cast off the old attitudes of 2021. So imagine yourself taking off that old, dirty, tattered robe of anything that has attached itself to you in 2021. And right now in Jesus name, I just brush you off of all of those things that have attached themselves, whether it be wrong mindsets or grief or burdens or trauma. Right now we just release you from all of that in Jesus name. Now, as we do this, Father God is handing us a golden cord to wear as a belt around the new robe. Along this cord are engraved medallions. On each medallion is a truth that we learned and now take with us into the future. You can head out. Remember, trials produce perseverance, and perseverance is a testament of our faith. That's James 1, 2 through 4. Here's the thing. Um, God wants to give us freshness and new life. You know, uh, that post that, that Lonnie did was so right on is, hey, 2022, I'm coming back. But in order to do that, we have to prepare our hearts and reflect and to ask God where we're at. And so I want to go through a little time of reflection. So if you, um, if you caught my post, make sure and grab a pen, paper, um, or an amazing tablet. I want to ask to do some reflection questions. I'm going to give you a minute after each question to really reflect with God. And now here's the thing. We don't do this of just reflecting in our own mind, but reflecting within our heart with Jesus. Because Jesus, the Father, is going to give you your value. The Father is the one who gives you your identity. The Father is the one who is going to speak life to you. And so as you reflect, let Father God speak truth to you. Let him speak who you really are. So here's some 2021 reflections for you. In 2021, what challenges did you face? Here's the next question for you guys. In 2021, 
what lessons did you learn? In 2021, what lessons did you learn? Next question. In 2021, how did you grow? Next one I feel is really, really deep. So Father, pour out your love as we acknowledge this thing. Let's reflect on this. In 2021, what broke your heart? And how did your heart open? What broke your heart? And how did your heart open?
the next one. What do you want to remember? And what do you want to celebrate? Now, what are you grateful for? So we're gonna wrap up the the part of this is that's about reflecting. So I wanna go through these things. What challenges did you face? What lessons did you learn? How did you grow? What broke your heart? And how can you let Jesus in to heal that thing? What do you want to remember? What do you want to celebrate? And I would say most importantly of all, what are you grateful for? And next we're gonna get into a short time of intention, intentionality. So I'm gonna ask you a few questions again. Actually, now put this is uh, the writing that Denise gave me. I'm going to post it in the chat so y'all have that. Then we're going to move on to intentionality. Your first question is this How will you choose to approach 2022? Next, in 2022, what qualities will you intentionally 
cultivate. Next. How will you focus your attention? In what area will you pour your attention into? The next one is, what are some things that you can practice that will nourish you? For example, one of the things I choose to practice that nourishes me is I go hiking, I take a walk. My business uh, mentor, she uh, sometimes just tells me that, Rebecca, go take a walk. So what practice can you adopt that will nourish you? a couple of Tang there with me. This one's huge, huge, huge. And so I'm going to ask you to get this one right from God himself. So I want you to ask him this question. None of you in this, all of God in this one. Hear it right from him. In 2022, Father God, what do you want me to let go of? Father God, what do you want me to let go of in 2022?
contigo. Two more to go. Father God, how do you want me to grow this year? All right, last question. What are you going to do to take better care of yourself this year? So God's love is deep. God's love is high. God's love is long. And God's love is wide. He wants to heal every hurt, every trauma, every offense. And in the middle of it, he brings ashes into beauty through teaching us and training us and making us more wise and helping us to understand. When we go through painful things, there's a couple of things. You have a choice. You have a choice to make in that moment. Am I going to hold on to that pain as a victim? Or am I going to choose to see this as an opportunity to learn and to grow? It's amazing to watch people who have been through the same trauma as one another. And it really is up to the in, how the individual chooses to respond to that trauma as for the outcome. God has not left you or forsaken you. God is not absent in your journey. 
He is fully present in all things. He, he will take those hard things and make them into victories and testimonies. It is time for us to walk away from the dirty tattered robe of this last season. The winter season is coming to a close and it is time to come on back, to make that big comeback, to make that big victory, to have closer relationships than you've ever had before to have fresh vision and a fresh focus for your future, you have the opportunity to walk away from what happened in the past and be intentional and purposeful about your future. God doesn't want you to sit passively by while he just commands the story of your life. You are no victim to your life. You are a partner and a friend of the Father. You get to come to him and he offers solutions. He guides you into all truth. He loves you deeply. Now, all of these questions are in the chat box. I encourage uh, you guys to just save the chat if you need to work through some of these more deeply, I just encourage you to be intentional. Um, oh, thanks Vince. Yeah, put them all in a one nice line for us. So there's just two boxes you can cut, cut and copy and paste. And if you have any trouble with that, just email me at Rebecca at ignitefreeport.com. I will send you the questions um, personally. But I really encourage you to, that if you didn't get done with this process today, let it finish. Because you don't want to have to walk around the same mountain again, do you? Mm -hmm. Let the process finish. Pastor Dan, you can make your way back in here with me when you're ready. But listen, the steps are number one, we don't do shame here. Number two, recognize the lie we're believing. This, this here gives you humility, coming into agreement with who God made you to be. Remember, M Moses was the most humble man on earth. And who wrote that saying? Moses. He was just telling the truth about who God says he is. That's what humility looks like. Then we have empathy. It's allowing yourself to get into the shoes of another and understand what they may be experiencing. And then looking in your heart for the deepest why, the root. And then be grateful that God showed all this to you. This will bring about healing. And then when we clean up our mess and we're grateful, this brings about honor. So we throw off that tattered robe and we bring out that fresh new life of 22.